Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover, and I'm here with Tim Greveson. And security is something that certainly should be on every business's mind. If it isn't, then maybe there's a different problem. But what kind of trends are you guys seeing at HPE uh, around security, and what's changing in the security world? Okay, so I think the, the first thing we're seeing is the, the bad guys are changing their mode of operation. So they're becoming uh, significantly more sophisticated. Um, it used to be, you know, the schoolboy in their bedroom doing the, the hack or the the, uh, the nation state. What we're now seeing is the the bad guys are professionalizing, building themselves an ecosystem like any other business or enterprise. So they are building uh, an ecosystem which allows them to run, uh, deliver high profit with low risk. So they're building things like an HR department for recruiting, hiring, and training the right people. They are recruiting operations people who are very good at money management. They're building R&D, so they're producing uh, the right goods of the wares that they like to sell on the dark market, but they're also building um, marketing and sales so that they can make sure they get to their audience quickly, they can deliver things of quality. Where, where do you find this type of information? Because it doesn't seem like I would go to LinkedIn and look for a job with a hacking firm. Uh, well, typically on the dark web. Uh, the, the, the difficulty is they, they look like any other organization. So, you know, traditionally they were, you know, underground and hidden, but they now could be in an office renting a space. The, the challenge with that, though, is they could be anywhere in the world. So, you know, they could move very quickly, they're very agile, and they build their reputation. So it, it's, it's available out on the dark market, typically. Um, I've even seen adverts uh, in some of the dark market where they're, they're looking for developers and hackers who may not be, you know, doing the right thing. So, how is HPE and maybe even other companies responding to this uh, kind of new behavior in the hacking community? So, so I think the first thing is we're trying to educate our, our customers and clients. It's, it's less about the technology. It's less about boxes, wires, widgets, and helping the CISO community to understand uh, and educate their boards. You know, the board very much gets uh, the ability of uh, you know, managing risk, growing margin, we find often the CISO community talk in, uh, in techie babble and there's a disconnect, so we're helping them to understand that if they speak in business language, EBITDA, talking about cost, talking about revenue, to open that door up, but talking to more of the board, so it's not just the CISO should be having this conversation, it's the marketing director, it's the CIO, it's the CISO, it's the CMO, the CFO, but getting them to understand really um, how those organizations are building themselves understanding their strengths and weaknesses, and then do everything to try and disrupt you know, the bad guy, because ultimately they're out to make money like we would as if we were a normal enterprise. So do you have any uh, kind of examples of areas that you're seeing uh, these types of behaviors? I, I do, yeah. I mean, one of the things we need to start focusing on is less about the technology and having a good mix of people, process, and technology to understand and find the bad guy. Uh, so I'll give you a really good example of uh, getting the basics right, because often organizations fail to do that. Uh, I was traveling on the train uh, to, to Discover, and I was sat in a crowded carriage, and there was a lady on the train booking her holiday. Uh, so bearing in mind there was 40 or 50 people in this carriage, she was on her cell phone and she was telling everybody in the carriage uh, when she was going on holiday, what her credit card details were, where she lived, her date of birth. So I wrote it all down, you know, being a good citizen, handed it across the, the table to her, at which point the colour drained from her face. And she said, well, where did you get this from? Uh, and I said, well, you know, you've got to protect your, your personal and private information. So that's a, a really good example of getting the basics right. So it's ah. about awareness and education. That's a, um, that's, a, that's a really good example, I guess, because um, I wouldn't even think of saying my credit card over the phone at this point anymore because there are web forms that you can fill out and, and, and you can protect your screen so that it's really hard for people to see it. So You'd be surprised. I mean, it, happened, it happens so many times. You know, I, I've often sat in, in public transport or in hotels uh, and you can hear people giving out private information, particularly you know, where they're going on holiday and when. So for the cyber criminal, you know, we're getting as much information as they would need to build a, a picture of that ecosystem of that individual. So we're starting to see them go after individuals now as well as corporations. So, and, and actually that's an interesting point because I think one of the things that I have seen just in, in kind of following the media around security is that if somebody is stealing your cell phone, they don't want the, the device so they can sell the device for a couple hundred bucks. They actually want all of your personal data that is on the phone. Absolutely, they're, they're after data. Uh, you know, and, and traditional security was to build a wall, keep everything inside your organization. You know, so it, I have a cell phone. 
I often use uh, the British Airways app, for example. I do a lot of traveling. When I'm accessing that, uh, that app, I'm, I'm literally accessing 18 different cloud services. Now, so is that secure? So the bad guy isn't after your cell phone, they're after the data. So our point of view is to, to focus on the interactions between the user, the data, and the application. Because ultimately, the bad guy wants to uh, commoditize and monetize something. Now, we know that the, the cyber criminal market is in excess of $325 billion. So it's, it's lucrative for them. And we're starting to see a trend moving towards ransomware. Whereas before they might have gone and attacked a very large organization and a very large ransom, they're now starting to target uh, individual citizens like you and I, you know, putting um, uh, ransomware on, on the mobile device, uh, encrypting data, and then you know, asking and demanding uh, a ransom. It might be only a few dollars. People are more likely to pay that than if it was a very large number. So the bad guys can do it many times for a small return, but actually overall the return becomes much larger. That's actually kind of an interesting uh, facet because much like uh, big companies tending to go after uh, really large accounts, enterprise accounts, if you will, um, it sounds like the, the hackers are moving down market into the, the small, bit, small and medium-sized business. They are, I mean, they're still attacking the enterprises, the governments and the countries, but they're also going for the, 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 the SME market or the individual because they can do it very often, frequent, and the return on their investment is massive. You know, they make a very small investment and because they've built their ecosystem already to deal with the enterprise type attack, they can do that for the smaller business as well. So very much a, a shift in the market. So if you had to kind of summarize, what, what should corporations be thinking about doing and maybe even individuals okay. uh, thinking about doing to kind of help protect themselves? So I think the first thing is, is good user awareness, but, but effective user awareness, that's personal to the individual. You know, often I, I talk to CIOs and CISOs and say that yes, they're doing it, but then fail to measure it's actually having any impact. Uh, the second thing is focusing on the data and those interactions between the user data and app is important to detect the bad guy faster. I think we know from the Ponamon uh, global cost of cybercrime that, the, that you know, the cost of a breach is going up. So last year in 2015 it was $7.7 .7 million on average. But we also know that the, the bad guys are inside your organization longer. Um, so they're in gathering information using a mixture of physical security and virtual security. So anything you can do to find them quicker, um, reduce that time that they're in your organization is useful. But I think the final one is, is make the assumption at some point you'll be breached. It, it's not, uh, you know, if, it's when. And protect that data. So, you know, consider uh, good encryption. You know, so format preserving encryption, stateless encryption that HPE delivers to its customers, allows them to manage a very large estate and manage the individual's data, focusing on that data, which ultimately the bad guys are after stealing. You know, personal information, credit card data, intellectual property. It's disrupting their, their use of that data if they were to steal it. And, and I think that's probably the ultimate goal, is to disrupt whatever behavior they're trying to do. It is, because they're running their business. You know, they're ultimately trying to do things for, for maximum profit, uh, minimal risk. So if you make it more disruptive and more difficult, their likelihood is they'll go elsewhere. Uh, or if they do attack you, the, the, the information is less useful for them to, to ultimately sell on the back market. All right, well, thanks, Tim. No problem. Thank you.